All right, so I was working on this slope right here and the uh, track on the Takahoochee, it's a 10,000 pound machine. I'm not quite sure what the numbers are, but uh, they're building a garage here. And I'm out of breath from walking up this hill again. But uh, what happened was, I gotta get his ball. If I don't, he'll keep barking. You all know every time I make a video, he barks. So, anyways, that damn track came off on that hill. I was perched on it sideways. That's like the third time I've had a track walk off. And it happens. I mean, when you own a track vehicle or run them, they will come off eventually. In my opinion, though, this is United Rentals machine. It's a TB260. Poor maintenance. Uh, the reason why I say that is it didn't have a lot of grease in there. I tried to pull it back on with the chain, with the bucket. I've hooked a come along right here, tried to pull it on, and it had so much grease in it, the idler was pushed forward. I didn't say lack of grease on this one. The other side had lack of grease because it was really loose, the tracks were. So I continued to run it and it walked off. All right, so in order to tighten this up, I'll show you. You get in here or to loosen that idler to pull it back, all I did was take the uh, spud bar and push it back, raise the machine up, which it's raised up right now because it's a lot easier on the uh, cylinder that tightens this up tightens that idler up if you raise the weight up the, off of the machine i don't care if it's a dozer track hoe whatever you're using it won't blow that seal out as easy uh, which is what usually goes on it's a you know just like a piston like a shock absorber and all that weight on there uh blows that seal out of the end people don't think it does but it does i'm, I'm telling you it does so i tightened it up you can see here now it's just got a little bit of bounce and uh, so inside here, let me see if I can turn this light on. Right in there, there's if you can see that, there's a grease fitting right there. And what you do is you loosen that nut, and that's all that is is a check valve in there. And uh, and that's that cylinder that's in there. So this is the actual the end on the canister on the cylinder. Uh, you know the the part that holds the oil or the air, whatever kind of shock absorber you got. In this case, it's a a piston. And a cylinder and the cylinder holds the piston in there and the grease well you loosen that up and that grease all that grease that you see in there is what backed out when i pushed on the idler to push it back so i could get the track on it and then you tighten that nut that's right there uh see if you can see that nut it's kind of here let me just i hate to do this get my hands and i ain't got no rags here but i'll show you see that nut now so you loosen that up and all that grease will come out and then you tighten it back up and wait to put grease in it. Get your track back on. Usually a, 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 a ratchet strap with the flat or the hook kind will uh, hook right on this track. I don't care how thick it is. It'll hook on there and then you just take it to your bucket. It don't take a lot of force and just run your machine and it'll go over top of the strap or the chain. The chain will usually get caught in these and it's a major pain in the ass to get out. Uh, I know there's a lot of videos on YouTube of them using a chain, and it's really hard on the rollers, too. Um, and it's very dangerous. But you can take a ratchet strap and run through there, or you can just hook it on this pad. And it won't hurt it one bit. And then you just hook it to your boom and pull on it and roll, this, raise the machine up like this, and then run it, and it'll pull it right up on that idler. Then you come down here, you tighten that nut up, and you pump that full of grease and you know there's a, there's a, in the book it'll tell you how but this one doesn't have a book so i didn't know the exact slack that you're allowed in it i just tightened it up to where it's tight and there's just a little bit of bounce if you see that it's just a little bit of bounce in that uh that's plenty enough it won't walk off like that uh you should have seen it before there was so much play in these tracks that you know them are wide tracks my buddy said you think i can grab a hold of that and pull it on there and i said Pfft shit right that's so heavy you can't even move that but uh anyway so that's my short video on on this takahoochee i'm putting a track on i didn't make a video of trying to get it on because i was on a hillside and i had to walk it and use the boom and twist at the same time and just run one tram and i got it up on the blacktop or the concrete up there and then that's where i continued to work on it at until brandon got here and then um we uh trying to get that nut on there one-handed left-handed and i'm a right-handed person 
But uh, anyways, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll make some more videos of some different equipment. Uh, this is a pretty good stout machine. I'll do a walk around real quick. It's got new tracks, but it's a pretty new machine. I mean, it's still got the plastic on the on the seat. But you got a radio over there, all kinds of switches. And I really don't know what they all do. I've never seen a machine with that many switches. And then you got your, you got your high idle, which is right here. So you turn that all the way up. Well, it don't do nothing until you push this button right here, the this one here, uh, and then it'll rev the machine up. And then you got your all your diagnostics right here. And like I said, it's a ten thousand pound machine. It's got AC, heat. You know, it's got all the goodies and the big pads where you can walk the machine. Um, but yeah, it's a comfortable machine, adjustable seat. All the glass moves, good sound system. It's not as good as that cat that I was running, but that cat had actual bass. I mean, people uh, couldn't believe, they thought I put an aftermarket stereo in it, the neighbors did. But uh, I wished it had a three-way blade on it. It don't, so that three-way blade's really handy. And I dug that ditch over there on that hill. Can't see it, this phone. I'll have a couple GoPros here soon. They should have been here today and they didn't show up, but uh, Anyways, I'll make some better videos, and thanks for watching.